Welcome to the Usen Designer Speaking Series with Billy Blue College of Design at Torrens University. And today we're speaking with Athena X. Lavendi. Welcome, Athena. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming here to talk about your story, your creative story. Now, we know Athena X. Lavendi from, from, from many, many, many sources. But uh, one of them is, of course, the Sydney Housewives. But that's only one aspect of you. There's more to Athena than the Housewives of Sydney. Tell us about Athena's story. Well, where do we begin and how many hours do you have? <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got as long as you want to give us. Athena X, first of all, Athena X Lavendi, what's the X stand for? It stands for Xenakis, my maiden name. So when I first came to Australia in 1996, um, I started a course at the National Arts School, a full-time degree in painting and sculpture. And I used to sign my artwork, Athena Xenakis, but nobody can pronounce it. And um, eventually I just got sick of trying to teach people how to pronounce Xenakis. Mm -hmm. And so then I just started signing my name Athena X and it just became a stage name. Well, I must say it sounds very exotic and it fits for your creative <laughs> energy, I must say. So you studied, um, you studied art initially, so in Sydney? Well, originally I, I was born in Sydney, but then my parents relocated back to Greece in, in the mid eighties. So I did all my, tertial education in Athens and I was always very creative and finishing high school I decided that I was going to um, do something in fashion because I've always been obsessed with clothes from you know early early earliest as three years old I remember choosing my outfit and having fits on the floor and um, really having an import even in my environment telling my parents that they had horrible furniture taste and etc so um, growing up in Athens, I knew that I was going to do something creative. So I went to a um, designer college um, called Actos. And what I did there was I studied fashion and textile design. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. So was, was, is that where, um, I, I guess you, from there you went into art and you came back to Australia and studied further or you went, went into, to, to create further education with the art? Well, the truth is I was dreadful at fashion design. <laughs> Just because you like fashion doesn't... I love these interviews. It's about being raw. So <laughs> tell us the truth. Okay, tell us about your failures well, as well. I remember I, um, we had to do patterns and I remember stuffing up the, the pattern completely and putting the sleeves backwards onto the jacket and... It was just really stressful because you had to be really good at maths and I was really bad at maths. So I literally kept failing half my subjects, but I was really good whenever it was a creative task. And one of my lecturers at the time called me in and she said, Athena, you're very creative. You have an in incredible imagination. And I just love the way you put things together, but I don't think you're a fashion designer. Yeah. I think you're an artist and you should do a degree in fine arts. And yeah. This lady actually was the person who inspired me to then um, want to do art. But the thing was, you know, when I, when I told my parents I wanted to become a full-time artist, they just laughed and they said, um, a female artist? How are you ever going to make money? But, yeah, that, was, that was very generational too, wasn't it? I know, but for me, I've never done anything for money. I've only ever done things that feel right and give me a sense of joy. Yes, yeah. And I think that's what we hear, isn't it? People say, Go into a career that's got, that actually makes you feel good, that you've got passion, so that you get, then, then, then it won't be a chore, you'll be able to deliver. But at that point when your lecturer said to you, Athena, you're clearly not a fashion person, you're more artistic in, a, 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 in another genre or in another, in a, in another area of, of creativity. Did you actually resonate with that at that point or were you offended? Um, well, my ego was kind of um, shaken, but the truth is, I actually knew I sucked in, in, in constructing an outfit. I love your honesty. I mean, <laughs> this is what I love about Athena. That's why we're talking to you. Yeah. Well, you know, um, I say it as it is. And, you know, a lot of people don't like that. They don't like honesty. A lot of people waste a lot of time in their life in the wrong relationships, in the wrong look, in the wrong job 
telling themselves a lie, trying to convince themselves that what they're doing is accurate just because they started off doing something and they, don't, they feel, well, I've started this now, I've committed to this person, I've committed to this look, I've committed to this job. Oh, you know, if I change, now that means I'm a failure. And, you know, I believe that that's where you find your true self, in yeah. failure. Yeah. And for yeah. me, I guess what that lecturer did was probably really harsh. Gosh, that's, that's, that's wonderful advice. It was really harsh. You find your true self in failure. They're very strong words. Coming back to the Real Housewives of Sydney, you, you, you mock your fashion background, but yet you are fashion. And certainly you were portrayed as somebody that understood fashion. And one of the, I guess, one of your, um, your successes and one of the things you stand for is vintage fashion. So you are fashion. Fashion is something beautiful that one day becomes ugly, whereas style transcends time. Wow, we and are getting some great <laughs> statements and cliches today. And I would love to be seen as a person who loves and appreciates style, not fashion. And I think that that's where my love for vintage comes in because I don't need to buy that fashion piece that some incredible, very gifted designer has created and curated for his customers. And I understand that most people do not have the time or they don't have the creativity or they don't know how to go searching for each piece. And for me, I don't need a designer to do that. That's why I'm probably a very bad client for a designer in the sense that I don't go to these high-end designers and buy off their rack. Because for me, that doesn't give me joy and a rush and excitement. What gives me excitement and pleasure and joy is finding that piece and creating my own curated look. And I can't do that with new pieces. Very rarely will I go to a designer and buy something. Um, for me, vintage is, is more the hunt, the search and the find and creating these very unique looks that nobody else has. And usually with my clothes and the way I put things together, it's very emotional. I very rarely planned an outfit and stuck to it. Usually getting dressed five minutes into um, what I thought I was going to wear it might completely change because I am an emotional dresser and it's a creative process and I am completely and utter, you know, I have surrendered to the creative process. And through and through, you're a curator, <laughs> clearly. Curator <laughs> oh. of fashion, curator of art, curator of your spiritual energy, which we'll get into as well. But I, I guess, um, I mean, beauty is, it comes from within. And, I'm and, obsessed and, with and, it. And, and style is certainly about the individual. And I love the way that you're actually portraying that because what you're actually, what you're, what you're saying is just be confident in self mm. and then everything's beautiful. Yes. And I think that we all have special talents. And I believe, you know, I meet pe people all the time and they say to me, oh, I don't have a creative bone in my body. And I actually don't believe that. I think everybody is creative. It's just that some people are creative in different ways and they might not express it through their clothes. They might express it through their makeup or they might express it through their home or they might express it through their cooking. But I don't believe nobody that, that there is somebody on this earth that is not, not creative. And I feel that once we indulge and al allow ourselves to be creative and find that creative passion, it, it's just so fulfilling and rewarding. It's not about, um, for me, it's never been about oh, affordability or um, I can access something that somebody else can access. It's not about that. I think that that beauty is of a high vibration also and there's harmony in beauty and that's why museums are filled with um, such beauty. That's why there are paintings that are profound and have transcended time and they're so significant to history. The same thing with sculptures and, and even styles, you know, certain styles in, in fashion, they keep coming back. Yes. And it's, if something has been done with harmony and with authenticity, to honour beauty, it, it might go out of fashion. And that's why I say fashion is something ugly. 
one day, but it comes back and it's beautiful again. Yes, yeah. Th there's, I'm loving your authenticity and, and the fact that you're, you're so honest. You're, you, you, had, you had formal training in a creative sense. What do you think that gave you to become the person you are today? The only thing that um, formal training allows a young person to do, which I really believe that if somebody is interested in um, developing their creative um, abilities, they must go to a, 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 an art college uh, and um, pursue and better their skills. But I think the only thing that you are really taught, because I feel that most people are talented if they go in that direction and gifted, um, what you are taught is to be allowed to break the rules. Because you can only break the rules once you have mastered the rules, yeah, yeah, once you yeah. have knowledge, sure, once yeah. you understand perspective, once you understand shape and form, once you even understand the term karaskuro, you know, the light coming out of the darkness. And, you know, these are simple things, but very important things to also then be able to say, I understand how to construct the most perfect jacket and now I can make a jacket with the sleeves down to my ankles, you know, like what Vitamins is doing at the moment yeah. and they're so inspirational. Yeah. Is there a particular designer that has inspired you on your journey? Oh, that's a tricky question because there are so many designers that inspire me um, for all different reasons. But the people who really inspire me are TV characters from old Hollywood movies and um, interesting enough, people won't believe it, but one of my biggest fashion inspirations, which I feel all young people usually use uh, a musician or a, a, a singer, and for me it was Michael Jackson. I was, I was um, very obsessed with all his military references and I just loved no coincidence to the to the bomber jacket you're wearing today. Well it always comes out. It's always there. But then I also liked very romantic films with Audrey Hepburn and you know all the outfits that Givenchy designed for her. Athena, how does a creative person like yourself end up on a reality program? Let's just cut to the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and a lot of people <laughs> asked me the same thing. And, uh, like, I don't know. I think it's the fact that I'm quite colourful and I'm a very layered character. I was certainly a character that would not conform and I'm quite different. So perhaps I was cast to be the outcast. Well, when you say not conform, were you just being honest? Well, exactly. Well, exa I, I'm, I thought I was on a reality show, so I wanted to be real. Funny enough, a lot of people that go on reality shows, they become something else. It's once you stick a camera in front of their face, they are afraid to show that they're vulnerable. What advice would you give to graduates or up-and-coming designers that, that, that want to make it? Is there, is, there, is there something that you can just give to um, inspire their journey? Keep doing it. Just keep doing it. I always say keep doing whatever you're doing. If it feels good, it will give you something good in return. I always say have courage, be bold, and don't do anything for money. It's probably the, the, <laughs> it's probably the worst advice, but I feel that in life, the more you chase something, the more it runs away from you. And it, there's a little bit of a, an oxymoron to this because I am a complete um, visualizer and I believe in manifesting and whatever we put out into the universe, we're almost like sending a signal that will come and find us. So obviously you want to have success and obviously you want to have nice stuff and be able to afford it and in, you know, support other designers and what have you. And so you need, you need that damn green thing money, but, <laughs> but that should not be why you do something. Because if you do something that you love, 
then you're giving so much joy. There's a high energy in that. So the universe is going to reward you. Believe in what you do, um, put it out there and it will come and find you. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great. That's, that's wonderful raw advice. In regard to um, your creative journey, you, you, you've married Panos Lavendi, um, Lavendi Jewelers. Interesting, also a creative family as well. How involved are you in the Lavendi jewelry process? I'm quite involved. Like I'm married to the, to the, you know, to one of the partners. So it's a family business. My in-laws started the business in South Africa, and then they um, came to Australia in the 80s, and they opened two jewelry stores. One called Cellini's, and the other one Perry Jewelers. And then once the boys were in their 20s, they decided they wanted to be part of the business. And then they opened Lavendi um, in, um, I think, the late 90s with the brand Lavendi, which was incredible. Um, they've, they've done really well because they've always designed beautiful jewellery. They enter all the designer competitions. In, um, I think, 1999, we won Best Solitaire Design for De Beers, which was huge. We've actually won that award for different categories over the years. Um, well, it's no coincidence having the creative energy that you do, which clearly goes with what that represents. And, and I must say, I'm loving my Lavendi watch. Well, <laughs> you know, it's, it really suits you. And it's an incredible um, story behind how Panos and I decided to design our own watch. This yeah. was in um, the mid 2000s when they were, watches were a really huge trend and we used to carry Tag Heuer and um, uh, Jaeger Le Coutre and some Bon Messier, some really good brands but they had just kind of um, these brands were everywhere and all of a sudden you know we just couldn't make the 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 agreements of selling all these watches for these companies and it was like we were working for these big watch brands and making such a small um, profit on carrying all their collection because they kind of say well you need to carry now hundreds of thousands worth of our watches so that you can have our watch in your prestigious store and one day over dinner i just said to panos stuff that let's design our own watch i love it athena x says let's design our own <laughs> and that's what i say about having the courage and my husband just said then he said you are crazy and i said now you realize it <laughs> And I just said, why? Like, why can't we design our own watch? And he said, do you know how much that is going to cost? And I said, well, let's just not go on holidays for the next two years and let's create a watch. Yeah, yeah. Well, we didn't go on holidays for a few more years, but that's another <laughs> story. <laughs> yeah. We went to Switzerland and we found a watchmaker. A, 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 they're almost like architects, these people who design watches, because we had no idea how to design a watch. And he had actually worked for Fiat. He had designed cars. And he'd also designed um, watches for Bulgari. And very beautiful um, Swiss, French gentleman that we're really good friends with, Jacques. And we, you know, brainstormed. And it was over a year where we perfected the design. It's um, an automatic um, movement. It's, I think, a very beautiful watch because there are a lot of references to our heritage, our Greek heritage. It's called Ifaka, the famous poem of Kavafis is um, something we've chosen to have in the manual. It's about the journey, the destination, and sometimes you might never reach your island. And my husband is from the island yeah, of Ulysses. Yeah. Lovely creative so, journey, lovely creative story so behind it. Really it. It's, it's not just a timepiece. Exactly. Yeah, it, was, yeah. it was a romantic, spontaneous, um, crazy idea. And, you know, going against these big brands, and at the time, once we, st we were able to develop our own watch, because you have to build the, the mechanism and build special tools specifically for your watch, your own brand. So that is very um, costly. It's mm. not, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. A yeah. It's a process. Yeah. Yeah. So within two years, we, were, um, we made this limited edition um, first time piece for yeah. Lavendi. Yeah. And absolutely so beautiful So designed as well. in Australia. Yeah made in Switzerland, like it's, it's a big thing. Tell us about your art collection. You are the true artist. So this is really, this is where Athena is today, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. So we're talking about Athena X art. What's the, what's, what's the style, what's the inspiration? 
and where is it going? Well, it's me communicating with higher source, pure source. Um, if people believe... And what do, you, what do you mean by that? Pure source. Um, God. You know, I am able to tune into that other dimension. I usually paint after a long meditation. I go into my studio and I really don't know what I'm doing. I actually allow pure source to communicate whatever message it needs to give me onto the paintings. And I know a lot of people might think it's a bit happy clappy and hoo-ha, and I get that. I, I, I also think it's that sometimes too. But the artist is not the person creating the work. The artist is the paintbrush. We are the vessel. Everything that comes to us is from a higher source anyway. And my works are depictions of another realm. They're like meditations. I, I paint about past life memory and reincarnation. I've been doing this for a long time. I've been painting about past life memory and the masks we have even within a lifetime and the layers. And I've been doing this now for um, over 14 years, this topic. And it's, it's a, a, a spiritual process, it's cathartic, and it's very meaningful and poignant. I've been an exhibiting artist for over 15 years. I've had independent exhibitions um, lo locally and overseas and in Canberra. So I've been exhibiting for a very long time. So this isn't something new. And I feel that maybe there was a bit of a misunderstanding with the viewers of Housewives that I was some part-time person just painting occasionally. And that wasn't the case. Well, like, clearly anybody listening to us today would see that is, that is not the case. <laughs> wow, okay, so here we are. This is where the work engine is. This is actually where, the, where it all happens, yeah? Yep, okay. this is the first studio that I could call is a dry studio because every studio up to this point has been a garage that water would always come through the ceiling, the roof, and I'd have rats in my studio. This is the first posh studio I've had. Yeah. That's why it looks very neat today. Um. I must say, for an artist, you are very neat, but we can tell it, it is it is where it all happens because you've got all the pieces I, I, over I here. I it's especially nice. <laughs> okay. okay, tell us about this particular piece Oh, here. well, this is part of my new um, series that I've been working on, and it has to do with the firmament. It's... Um, <laughs> please explain. Oh, please explain. Well, what if the earth was not round and it was flat? And we believe that there was a firmament. So I've been exploring this new theory through my artwork. And these are all the little souls in the dimension beneath us. Are you actually building up to another exhibition? I am. Yeah. I am. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't be showing my, my <laughs> current work, but I feel that it's just so personal. My work is so personal and it is very unique that I, I couldn't see how someone would then take my idea and then try to recreate it because well, I've never seen anything like my work out there before anyway. So. And that's, that's a true artist. I mean, yeah. that, that is, you're, it's, it's authentic to you, which is where you've created your following. And uh, how many exhibitions actually have you actually had? I've had um, 11, to 11. 11 today. Wow, yeah. so the next yeah. one will be the 12th. Yep. Yeah, fantastic, well done. There's something incredibly authentic about Athena X and um, your art does represent that and, and congratulations to you. Thank on you. That. What would Athena do different today? I wouldn't do anything different because I feel that our destiny is something that we need to fulfill. Um, even, you know, those moments of sadness or loss or lost opportunity, perhaps we were meant to have those moments to grow. And I always say that they're the moments that we do grow the most. It's when, when we are able to crack the ego, when the ego is eroded, is when we become one with whatever that divine is. And that's when we start tuning into who we're really meant to be. Because sometimes we could get caught up in the character or in the title or what society has told us. You know, we all kind of get caught up in these costumes. And that's why I'm, I, I'm the first person to make fun of the costumes. That's why I don't, I love the costumes because they're 
fun and they give you joy, but I also know that they're just a mask. I know that they're temporary. They've been given to us on loan, mm. but we certainly don't own anything. We don't even own our own character that we think we do. We hand that over. Athena Rex is very spiritual. I am. Yeah. I always have been. As in born, developed, learned behaviour? I've I've known that there was more to life from a very young age. From as early as eight, like I knew that it was a waste of time being a kid. I particularly didn't like my childhood. I had chosen a very complicated, violent environment and sad environment to grow up. Chosen? Chosen, yeah, I feel that we choose our parents before we incarnate into a lifetime. And perhaps I wanted really powerful lessons in this lifetime. So even at eight, I already knew I had been here before. What's Athena X's message? I don't think I know the message yet. I've actually asked my guides to tell me what the message is. Um, I do a lot of um, uh, astro traveling and really um, big hypnosis meditations where you're hypnotized and you go into another realm. And I've met my, my guides a few times and I've asked them what, because they have told me that I'm here to give a really big message but they've told me that I'm not allowed to know what the message is yet, but it's going to be big and it's going to be done in a very unique fashion, in a very unique way. And that I'm not to know because that would actually disturb the, the order of which it is meant to be given. Well, I think I know the message. The message you've given us today is be authentic, keep to your creativity, be honest and own it, and it will all sort out. The sky's the limit, <laughs> what a cliche, but the truth is I love anything that has to do with creativity, beauty and glamour. And so I feel that I'm in my element now and um, whatever comes my way, I'm open and I'm, I'm ready. And that's clearly why we've, why we've loved speaking with you today. Thank you for spending Thank the time. Thank you. Thank you.